Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video, I'd like to show you how to finish up our curtain walls and what I mean by finishing up. We already have the curtain wall looking the way we like it with the mullions and the grid lines in the right places and the panels of glass yeah, in a manner that we see fit. But uh, what we like to do is add a door to that curtain wall. Very similar to this door over here, what we're going to be doing is adding a door onto this curtain wall. What we need to do is we need to adjust our uh, curtain grids. Um, our grid lines as they might be called to in order for the millions to move over and to provide ourselves a panel that we can substitute out. So this is a little bit different from the doors that we put in before. This is a curtain wall door and it needs to be put in as a substitute to the panel. So to show you what a panel is, if I take my cursor and with the tab key rest it over here I can select a number of different things. This is what I consider to be a panel and so does Revit Architecture too. We could take that glass panel and substitute that, as I mentioned in class, we could substitute that panel with something else, specifically or ultimately a door, but you could also put in some opaque panels in here too of a specific color. If you want to embellish your project a little bit, if you want to put a, um, a line of, uh, of panels on top of a door in a commercial project with a certain color to it, that might be actually rather attractive. It could be colored glass or it could be a colored opaque surface. Okay, enough said here. Let's go ahead and make some adjustments to this. And remember how we adjust our grid lines, our curtain grids. If we slowly click, and because this is a, um, a storefront curtain wall, we need to be aware that a lot of these things are going to be pinned to our default settings. So right now our default settings are set at four, uh, four feet uh, horizontally or our vertical, our vertical placement actually is going to be four feet. And the way you can find that, and again if you go over here and just click on the edge of the curtain wall, select it, oh, select that, that's our uh, storefront curtain wall. We can go to the edit type and find out what our uh, placements are. So the vertical grid pattern is four feet, the ones that are going vertically up and down, and of course the ones horizontally are going to be set at seven feet. So these are seven feet, these are four feet. If you click on a million, tab it until we get the grid line in the background, the curtain grid, unpin it. Let's make that two feet instead of four feet. And so it's good when you have a dual dimension like this. When you change one, the other one's going to change two. So click in the dimension you really want to change. And it's always a good idea, good practice to start from the outside and work your way in. So we're going to make each one of these four feet, or two feet. We kind of have a space here in the middle, so let's go ahead and change this one too. Tab, select that. So six feet, let's make that three feet. Oh. <laughs> yep, unpin it. Instead of a three feet, let's make that four feet instead. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. Tab it. Unpin it. Four feet. All right, now we got it. Now, this distance here. Now, it's supposed to be seven feet. It's going to be 14 feet tall. That's a little bit tall for me. Let's go ahead and bring that down a little bit and maybe make this dimension again, thinking about working our way from the back to the front. You could also change that 7 foot dimension too if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and make that uh, maybe 5 feet. That makes uh, one on the top 8 feet. We could add a grid line on top in order to do that, uh, make that a little bit more attractive. Unpin this. Let's make this one 6 feet. So now it's 12 feet to the top of the door. That's okay. It kind of makes for a big door. Let's add a curtain grid. Up here on the top, if we just rest our cursor over there, we can get a grid line in there because it's a curtain wall, storefront curtain wall. It's going to put uh, our millions in place, and forfeit placement looks okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this panel in here, and let's tab that just to make sure we have the distance correct. As six feet, it's 12 feet wide for a door. That's a little bit too much. Let's go ahead and adjust that. Let's make that five feet and do the same thing on the other side tab. So to four feet we're going to make that five feet. Okay, so it's these panels here we're going to take out. Let's take out these uh, mullions. Let's unpin them. We're going to take out all these mullions. So if you control, with the control key selected, we can select this all at the same time. Press delete. They're gone. Click on the curtain grid. Add remove segments. Let's remove, remove that segment and that segment. And uh, if it's not selected again, let's go ahead and click on that. Add remove segments. That one and that one. Oh, takes it takes care of it anyways because you can't have an unterminated line in here. You can't have a piece of glass with an interface between it right down the middle as if somebody took a saw cut and cut it and didn't finish the cut. So now we need to substitute a door in here. And the way you find that door is you go to the insert tab on your ribbon. Go to load family. Now this is a door 
that we're going to insert as a wall element as a substitution. So what we're looking for are these three items, curtain wall double door, curtain wall single glass door, and a curtain, curtain wall storefront double door. And that's the one I like because it's got uh, the mullions that go with it too. It's got that extra frame hardware that goes with it. So we're going to go to open. Nothing happens really. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our cursor again over to the edge over here and go from selecting the mullion to selecting the grid line to selecting the panel. Ultimately, oh, just had it there for a moment. I also selected some items in the background too if you're not careful. There we go. Select it. Unpin it. Go over here to our uh, properties manager and get find the storefront double door, which is that guy. And that's all you need to do. Click somewhere else and you got yourself a door in there. Let's see what happens if we try to pin that. Oh, it goes back to the original default settings. So you want to keep that unpinned. And I don't think it'll go back to the other one. So again, we're gonna just for practice, we're gonna go ahead and select that double door. Storefront double door. There we have it. Let's look at that in a 3D view and it will be all done. And this looks very familiar to your uh, evaluation you're going to have tomorrow or on Tuesday. So the door you're going to be putting in is it going to be on this wall. The door I just put in is on this wall. So that's how you do it. Thanks for joining me. See me in some other videos.